Hey guys, welcome to the new tutorial series that is a GraphQL. We are going to look into the complete details of GraphQL. So what is the need of it? So GraphQL is actually a query language for uh, application programming interface. And also like in this entire tutorial series, we are going to look into that. So GraphQL with the Python and after that GraphQL with Django and we are going to see some functionalities and I'm going to show you some project also. Please follow this tutorial, we'll get a lot of insights and uh, especially for the web developments, mobile applications developments and all. And it is a completely data driven uh, API uh, query language. So today in this session, we are going to talk about introduction, complete details, even it is a little longer, please pay your attention, we'll get a lot of insights. And also at the end of the video, I'll give you some basic points which is going to give you more idea about why we need to go for the GraphQL. Now let's try to understand the, the problem statement. So let me take one scenario here to explain in better way. Assume that user ha using some application, okay? User can use that application by using the mobile and as well as with the computer. You can say that is a client side. So user can make a request, okay? So assume that that is a HTTP request that request will send it to the API and there is a, these APIs like endpoints and basically like I want user ID ABC123 details so I will ask these endpoints because here are three endpoints you are seeing in this example maybe I need it user slash then ABC123 I need the particular ID or uh, user ID information so then my API will be written back with the, some information that is in the JSON format, you see that there is a ABC123, I got name and the age, right? This is absolutely fine, which I got ABC123. So next time, I want to some other user details. If you look at here, in this case, I want ABC456. So again, you need to uh, send a request to the endpoints, get the details, and this is the results will be fetched. So maybe next time I want to details on the post, okay? So maybe you have to give your post ID, that is a user slash ID and post. Maybe like in this case, we can get the post details. So shall I keep on, we are uh, hitting the different endpoints, endpoint is retaining the, some data, right? So it's in the form of the JSON form, JSON response. This is like a, a completely tedious process when you want to move on to the step-by-step. To avoid this one, to make these many calls to fetch the data and what actually we can do it, right? We need some architecture like this. So same client mobile, client computer, user can make a request. And to handle these endpoints, we need something like query language to get the data. So for example, you are asking here in this case, there is a user ID. If, see in this case, you see that there is a user ID ABC456 and ABC 456 user is John and we need only in the post there is a title so we don't need complete data we need only specific data that data also we can request based on the query so you can write a API query that query will fetch the results as per your need instead of uh, requesting the whole data or like multiple requests you are unnecessarily creating a burden to the like server so that is the reason so you know that nowadays we are using the almost all client side applications, client server applications. So in that, we need some query language to handle these API calls in effective manner. So what is the query language we can use in this case? So that's where like we can think about this, which query language is the better to use is like GraphQL. The GraphQL is an open source data query and manipulation language for the application programming interfaces. It is completely open source and it's a data query and manipulation language for APIs. And also like the actual website is the graphql.org. The another point we need to understand here, there are so many protocols we have it uh, regarding the APIs, RPC, CORBA, SOF, REST. And just for your information, GraphQL is not completely a protocol. It's like a query language compared to all. This GraphQL is nothing but a query language, we can use it in this case. 
So coming to the positive important point, we should remember one of the fact that is a graph QL is uh, people always say that alternate to rest, but it's not definitive replacement of the rest. Okay, because if you see that many blogs, many uh, YouTube channels, many places people say that graph QL is a replacement. No. So this information I actually taken from the official website of GraphQL itself. And the another fact is also you should remember here that GraphQL is not a database language. It's a query language only. It is not database language. As you think like SQL, so it's not like type of SQL. It is a completely, a, a, it's not a database language, it's query language. So another fact also you should remember here in this case that when is the GraphQL, we can use it for both the front end and back end. As I said, GraphQL, we can use it into the client server applications. Okay, that's an important point we should remember. And what is the background? Who developed this? So GraphQL was used internally for Facebook mobile applications to reduce the network usage by means of specific data. And um, it is actually created by the Facebook itself in 2012. And um, so still they are using the GraphQL only. Just for your information, in 2000, REST was developed but GraphQL came in the market 2012, something like this, okay? And also we need to understand the architecture of the GraphQL. So what is the GraphQL architecture? This slide is very important. You just need to focus, assume that same computer and same like that mobile and we have the client mobile here. So assume that you are sending a request to the fetch the data from the database that may be like a SQL database are like you may get the you want some data frame from data from the amazon s3 or you may data from the something like uh, NoSQL db like mongodb so to fetch all this data we can use something called graphql server okay so this graphql server is going to uh, serve the request and response from the client uh, side and to fetch the details from the databases and other sources and not only the from the databases it is also like communicate with the REST APIs. It is also going to communicate with the microservices. So this is how the like graphs, GraphQL server works. Okay. So the GraphQL servers, it's it's like an intermediate between the, the client request and uh, how to handle those requests and send the response to the, the end user. This is like a GraphQL server comes into the place, a very important role. And more important thing we should remember the differences between the GraphQL and REST API. This is the most frequently question people can ask. So first thing is, as for the design, this GraphQL is a client driven, but REST API is a server driven and uh, schemas and types is the concept is there in the GraphQL. But in the REST API, we use the endpoints. But I'm going to talk about this in the upcoming sessions very clearly with the programmatically we can understand very, very much. And the basic operations we use in the REST API is the CRUD operations, but in the GraphQL, we use the query mutations and subscription. These are the very important concepts we are going to discuss into the uh, in the upcoming sessions. And the data fetching, that is a single API call for the specific data. We don't need to waste the multiple calls in the data fetching. And for the REST API, there is a fixed data with the multiple API calls out there. That's, that is a very tedious process. And the performance wise, GraphQL is very fast. The REST API is slow due to the multiple API clause. And we have the very good documentation for the GraphQL. And the GraphQL uses in the multiple microservices, data driven applications, mobile applications, and all. And the REST API is like simple apps, resource driven apps. So something like uh, resource based uh, apps, we can use it in the REST API, right? So coming to the point, what are the languages it supports? It supports as many languages like C++, Python, JavaScript, and Haskell, and Java, and Ruby, Perl language, Scala, R language, PHP, Elixir, Go language. These are the many languages it supports. There are many, basically, but in this entire tutorial, we are going to focus on the Python-based GraphQL. So coming to the point, what are the companies this GraphQL uses? Now you can see that these are the companies uh, which are actually using the GraphQL and there is a lot Airbnb like uh, Amplitude, ArangoDB, Atlassian. These are the many companies. This list is the really big list. So many companies are using nowadays this GraphQL. So 
can click on this you'll get some more idea about what are the other companies also using it you can see that the graphql landscape and uh, you see that all the companies list this list is the big so i don't want to say that only few companies here the big big companies like as you said facebook github and uh, intuit and the lyft okay paypal many many companies are using it so you can check this uh, the website uh, graphql website itself will get the lot of companies list let's talk about the combination of python and graphql so as i said earlier the graphql can be used in the different programming languages but in this tutorial we are going to put more focus on to the python modules so the python modules for the graphql okay so as actually divided into the client and server and first look into the first server side we'll get some idea the server side libraries is like graphene aradian and strawberry like this and the client side also we have something like uh, uh, gql sgql c python graphql client these are the very important modules we can check at server side and client side okay but the most i am going to start with the upcoming sessions with the graphene which is the most preferred library but we can also explore the other libraries as well okay but this entire video tutorial series we are going to experience the all these kind of servers and client uh, tools we'll get more idea about it okay and coming to the next important point here what are the graphql integrated development environments or like uh, uh, editors or uh, tools we can say so these are the some of the things which i listed here the graphql graphql and ismonia and graphql editor and postman and also we can use like a retool so like this the finally graphql playground there are many tools out there we can use the graphql but i am going to show you those things in the upcoming sessions we'll get more idea about it how practically we can use these tools okay so we are going to learn these tools um, how to use the graphql how to write a graphql queries and uh, how to fetch the data and uh, those things which we are going to explore it and coming to the point how to installation how to do the installations and basic programming of the graphql that we can see into the next chapter so before going to the closing this before going to close this session as i said earlier i'm going to talk very important points here so what is the take take away from this session so graphql is not alternative for the rest api right graphql is mainly used as a query language for the application programming interfaces it is a modern api concept okay and the graphql will not create a burden to the uh, client server applications it basically like it gives the so much of uh, um, fast performance when you when you have the multiple api calls so when you have the multiple api calls frequent api calls then better you can go for the graphql and when you have very small queries that that time you can go for the rest itself and the community is the big community rest community is the big community but graphql community is very small but in the future you can expect a bigger one as we know that data is growing a bigger so most companies are referred to the data driven applications or the data driven apis at that time we have to go for the data driven tools itself so that is what i want to make it very clear graphql is going to be very important for the client server applications which is going to be a consider the a design concept when it comes to that matter so hopefully we are going to figure out many things into the upcoming sessions we'll get more idea about it hope this concept you liked it okay so we are going to learn lot of things and please let me know your comments in the comment section i'll answer your questions thank you so much for watching me